Hey guys, welcome. This is our 1314 uh, video. We actually have a double one. Just go away. Uh, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, at the very top, we're going to start with 1-3, do some vocab, do a couple examples, and 1-4. So we'll try and keep it moving. Uh, so 1-3, real numbers in the number line, leave that at the top. So today we're going to classify a graph and compare real numbers and find estimates of square roots. Got a lot to do. Okay. Let's first talk about square roots. So we're going to go ahead and write down this box for sure. And a square root uh, is basically if a number is a square root of a number uh, b, a squared would equal b. So we have 7 squared would equal 49. So 7 is a square root of 49. So I call it two equal roots or two equal factors that multiply to make that. And that's how we get our square root. Okay, so this is kind of review. <coughs> This is kind of a cool right down here too. This gives us uh, some uh, more information about a square root. So we could also uh, call this piece right here as the radical. It indicates a non-negative square root. Can't have negative square roots. They also call it the principal square root, just meaning can't have negative. The expression under the radical is called the radicand. Um, so the radicand is right under there, and then the radical symbol, okay? And together, the radical symbol and the radical form a radical, okay? And we'll talk about negative square roots later. Um, but I would like you to go ahead and write all of this. So uh, we don't need to do that. You will learn negative square roots, just that part. So from here all the way to the radical, okay? So we're going to take a look at some square roots in a moment. Let's go ahead and just continue on with our vocab and moving along. All right, we have a special type of square root. We call it a perfect square. Um, and that's when a radicand, that's the one underneath, uh, sorry, when radicand is not a perfect square, we can estimate the square root. So we're gonna take a look at what that looks like. Um, but that's when we have those perfect squares. We'll talk more about that as well. Um, but we don't have to write that one down right now. Don't worry about it. Uh, we're gonna skip that and we're gonna go right over to uh, I'll read these off, but I'm not gonna have you write this down. Okay, so we have different types of numbers that we're gonna be dealing with rational numbers uh, Basically, they can be written as a ratio a to b Natural numbers are like our uh, counting numbers one two three four whole numbers are those numbers, but we include zero integers are whole numbers including zero and negatives and then irrational numbers are numbers that they either go on for infinity without repeating. Um, so they have a random order and we call them irrational because it's hard to make sense of them. So something like this that goes on forever but doesn't keep an order or pi is a great example. It will go on forever and the order is hard, uh, is not repeatable. So you just kind of have to continue to memorize what it would go out to. Um, but all of these rational and rational numbers are called real numbers. So what would I like you to write down? I would like you to actually draw this picture. This is what I want you to draw, okay? So rational numbers, they can be shown as a ratio. We can have repeating decimals, that's fine. We can have square roots as long as it is a consistent pattern if they're competing. Integers are whole numbers that are negative or positive uh, or zero. Uh, notice how it works. Rational numbers incorporates all these other ones, right? So integers are rational numbers. Whole numbers are integers. Uh, natural numbers are whole numbers. Are whole numbers always natural numbers? No. Zero would be a difference, okay? Natural numbers are only those counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not including zero, okay? Then irrational numbers over here are the ones that do not have... Uh, a pattern to them when they repeat forever. Okay, so that's a great picture to write down. So please write that down. Again, if you have to pause this video to do so, make sure you do. All right, and then our last piece here is inequalities. It is a mathematical uh, statement sentence to compare two values. So you have less than, greater than, less than, or equal to, greater than or equal to. So write down all that right there. Okay. All right, let's take a look at some examples. Okay, so here's our first example, example one. And we have a square root. Uh, we have two different square roots here. So 
Um, it's great for us to have our perfect squares memorized. What our perfect squares are is they have two equal roots, like I said. So if you take a look at 9, we could actually rewrite this as the square root of 9. Again, when we do examples, you write the problem and the words, and anything that I write, you're going to write as well. So we could actually write it as two separate square roots. And then we got to ask ourselves, what two numbers multiply to give me 9? And if they're the same number, then we can actually just use that. So 9 would be 3 times 3. Since it's the exact same number, we have two equal square roots. So the answer is just 3. Square root of 9 is 3. If you guys don't believe me, um, I will show you on my calculator. I know sometimes people don't believe me. They're like, you're just full of it. You're just making it up random stuff. Um, but there you go. Square root of 9 is 3. You see that? All right, cool. Uh, square root of 16. Uh, we could do 2 times 8 would make it, but I know that 4 times 4 does it, and those are two equal square roots, and so that's a perfect square. So we are good to go. So 3 over 4. So if you have a fraction, you can actually break them up into two separate ones, and you're looking for two equal vectors. Let's look at our next one. All right, let's take a look at this guy. This is uh, problem 2. What's the value of the square root of 34 to the nearest integer? Okay, well, 34 is not a perfect square. I don't know two numbers that multiply to give me 34, but we can try to see if any of these get close to it. So what would be 5 times 5? Well, that'd be 25. Is that pretty close to 34? It's close. What about 6 times 6? Well, that would be 36. So these are all perfect squares. Is that pretty close? That seems to be really close. 17 times 17, way too big. Okay, that looks like if I were to divide 34 by 2, which is not how a square root works, a lot of kids make that mistake. And then 36 is what it's closest to, but it's not its value. Okay, 36 is a perfect square. So we estimate it by thinking of a perfect square, and then what is the square root of that? So the square root of 36 would be 6. Okay, so 6 is our closest answer. Now let's just make sure that we're right. And B was the correct answer. Boom. Next one. Okay, so here's our third example. And we want to use an inequality, inequality to compare the two. Okay, so we got the square root of 17. And we got 4 and 1 third. Okay, well first got to figure out which one's bigger. Now, I'm looking at square root of 17. It's not a perfect square. I don't know two numbers that make it. In fact, I think 17 is a prime number. The only two numbers multiply it are 1 and 17. Uh, but it's really close to 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So this has got to be really close to 4. This is 4 and a third, or we could write as 4.333 repeating, right? So. I'm pretty sure this side is bigger, so what would the inequality be? Um, whenever kids figure out how to do this, they always get mixed up, but I just remember it very simply. The smaller piece has the point, the bigger piece has the big opening. So if this is bigger, oh, I just went lights out, what's up? Okay, um, if it's bigger, we're going to go like that, okay? So this has the bigger opening because it's the bigger number. This has the point because it's the smaller number, okay? All right, let's move on to the next problem. I'm going to get these lights back. Okay, um, we finished 1, 3. We're going to now move to 1, 4. Again, I know this is a double lesson here, so occasionally we'll have this. Um, so uh, if you want to uh, write separately 1, 4, properties of real numbers at the top, or where you left off, uh, we'll go ahead and continue this video. All right. Uh, first vocab word, and we'll get some examples after this. Two algebraic expressions are equivalent expressions if they have the same value for all the values of the variables. So um, we call these equivalent expressions. You don't have to write this down. So you don't have to write it down. Um, just a nice thing to talk about. But what you do have to write down whoops, uh, is our two properties. And this would be commutative property and associative property. Okay, so commutative property works for addition and multiplication, and all it means is that we can change the order of our addition pieces or of our factors. Okay, so add-ins are what we call pieces that we add, factors are what we call pieces that we multiply. So commutative property means we can change the order around. Notice I go A to B, from B to A, 18 to 54, to 54 to 18, so we're just changing order. 
associative property is all about just changing the grouping. Okay, so I'd like you to write this whole box down for me. Um, and those are two major pieces for us. All right, we're actually going to go ahead and I'm going to pause and we're going to move really quick. Okay, so here's our next one. Uh, we have a couple more properties. We have the identity property, which just means if you add zero to something, it stays the same, it keeps the same identity. Or if you multiply anything by one, it keeps the same identity. We call it identity because your identity doesn't change under these certain things. Then we have the zero property of multiplication, which just means you multiply something by zero, and it is zero, no matter what. And then the multiplication property of negative one, if you multiply a positive number by a negative, it's going to become a negative. Also, if you multiply a negative by a negative, it becomes a positive. Okay? Uh, so write those three down. Moving on. Okay. We're not going to have you write all these down. We're just going to do them real quick. What property would this be? That is correct. Zero property of multiplication. You multiply by zero, you get zero. What's happening here? Order is y 2.528, y 2.528, same order. What's changing? The grouping. So what do I have? Associative property changes my grouping. Again, we don't have to write these down. Uh, adding zero to something, it doesn't change the identity of it. So we would call this the identity property of addition. And here we are multiplying something by one. Notice it doesn't change. That means we are dealing with the identity property of multiplication. Okay. Oops. All right. Let's move on. All right. We're going to use this as our last example for today. So, okay. A can holds three tennis balls. A box holds four cans. And a case holds six boxes. How many tennis balls are in ten cases? Use mental math. Okay. So we can actually use our properties of commutative and associative to help us solve these, okay? Well, if a can holds three tennis balls, a box holds four cans. So we gotta first ask ourselves, we gotta take care of that first, so that's grouped, okay? So we have a box that has four cans. Each can has three tennis balls. So we need to multiply those together, and that's gonna give us a total of 12 tennis balls in a box, okay? Then it says a case holds six boxes. So we're going to take six times that 12 that was in one box, and we're going to multiply those together. And if we do that, we're going to get 72 in a case. Okay. And then it says we have how many cases? 10 cases. So we're going to do 10 times 72, which basically just throws a zero on it. So we have 720. Again, it says use mental math, meaning which we should have done this in our head. Um, I'm showing you notes, and so we're showing it physically out how we would do it. Now let's just double check our correct answer. Was that 720 tennis balls? We're good to go. All right, well, we'll see you guys, and we'll talk much more.